Hey guys, I just got back from yet another expedition to go find some treasures. This is something I was not expecting to find, nor was it something I was looking for, but when I stumbled across it on Craigslist, I just couldn't pass it up. These don't come up for sale often, and I sure haven't seen uh, any around here, so when I saw it, I, uh, unfortunately it was kind of late in the day, and the shop was already closed, but I got up early today first thing and called them, and they already had some offers on it, but I got my butt over there, and cash works, so... <laughs> First come with cash in hand is the one who takes it home. Uh, an offer over the phone wasn't good enough to reserve it. I'm glad too because they were promoting it as an item that did not work and maybe it would be good for a prop or to make a fish tank out of or something like that. And the woman who was running the shop seemed a little bit surprised that I would actually uh, try to get it working again. So what is it? Well, maybe some of you can guess from the shape. Definitely something unusual and a nice addition to my collection. What it is, is possibly the rarest predictor of them all. It's the tandem set, also known as the penthouse set. It is the cool set that has the very novel feature of the pitcher tube not being attached to the cabinet. So, like all the predictors, it's got a pitcher tube that's in, in this ca a case that sits on top of the set. But this one is really outside the set because you can pick it up and you can move it around and put it anywhere you want to. And the tuner and all the other electronics stay behind in this little nifty cabinet here. Somewhat similar to the Holiday model, and I believe the insides are darn near identical, except of course for the long cable and the circuits needed to drive it. The cable 25 feet long so you imagine you have to have a more powerful video amp to push the signal through a cable that long. Likewise for the yoke and the high voltage. Now there are <laughs> a rush to there is one huge problem with this set which uh, uh, really made me hesitate except the price was too good to pass up on and that is the cable is gone the seller didn't know who did it or when it was done but the umbilical cord has been cut and tossed so all we have left here is just a fragment of what it would have looked like so you can see some pretty hefty insulation on some of those, especially the three in the middle. The one with the red, I believe, is for the high voltage. And the two next that are probably the horizontal yoke windings. And then various on the other side for power for the filament and the vertical windings on the yoke. Another huge gamble with this set is, is the pitcher tube any good? These 21 inch pitcher tubes are notorious for being bad. The seller, I believe, she said she got it at an, an estate sale. Oh, and if I didn't mention, I got this at a vintage shop on the north side of the city. Uh, and they have a lot of cool stuff in there, but they don't normally deal with TVs, and they almost passed up on it. But it was so nifty looking, they figured, well, somebody would be interested in it, so um, they put it up for sale few other issues with the base. Uh, there is a knob missing. We have brightness and horizontal. This I think is a vertical knob. I've seen these for sale occasionally. It's just a shame because the rest of the base is pretty well intact. Got the channel knob, fine tuning, and the power and contrast. Uh, or let's see, I think it's I think it's push. For the power, it turned this for volume and this is contrast. As memory serves. And it's got the back. It's even got the original power cord. And here's where that cable would have plugged in. And so rather complex, rather elaborate. But for all the engineering they put into this, I uh, really didn't sell that well because it's 
kind of a silly idea. Who really wants to carry around this pitcher tube up to 25 feet away? And it is fairly heavy. Far heavier than the base, actually. Probably oh, 25, 30 pounds, thereabouts. So, how about we do two things? One, gotta test the pitcher tube. Now, I do have that holiday model, which I was going to start working on soon, which uses the same pitcher tube, I'm pretty sure. So it is possible that I could use that pitcher tube, because this is a rarer or more valuable set. So I could use that holiday pitcher tube in this set. Now, it's not impossible to find a replacement, but they sure don't, co don't come up often. So let's hope that this one is still good. And uh, let's take a look inside the cabinet. From the outside, everything looks to be original and complete, but you never know what might be lurking inside. I just carefully removed the four screws holding the back on. They were on there pretty tight, so I imagine this thing hasn't been opened up in quite some time. Now, if you watch my video on the Predict a Holiday off there in the distance, you hear me talk about the these 21 inch Predict a Pitcher tubes and the problems they have. Originally, they used a 2.68 volt filament that had a really bad tendency to burn out. You see, these pitcher tubes are, are really short, they're 110 degree deflection, which was pretty cutting edge for the time. But that means the electron guns are really short, and they just didn't last that long. Well, to my surprise, when I checked the Holiday, it had been rebuilt and had a 6-volt electron gun in it. Much more reliable. So, what's in this one? Who knows? I noticed that when I took the screws off of this, it didn't come right out. There's something attached to it. Okay, I got it off. Now I'm really glad I was so careful. That's definitely a safety interlock. And there's also a tube in here. I think that was part of the trick to getting this to work is they had to put a tube up in here in order to use that long cable. There's also a little schematic on the inside lid here. So that is a video amplifier. So the feed would come through a coax on that long cable and they had to use another amplifier at this end before driving the pitcher tube. So here you can see all of those cables that are needed to make this thing operate. And it's supposed to be a 21 EAP4. And both that 3CB6 and the CRT were wired in series for the filament. Tube. Let's get that out of the way. And there's the CRT. Alright, I will dig out my Sencor and first I'll try it on 2.68 and see what happens. The 21 EAP4 is listed in my tube chart, but unfortunately you use socket number 4 with that, which I do not have. I have two number 5 slash number 6s, no number 4. But all's not lost because I can use a universal adapter, which is a bunch of little alligator clips. I just need to figure out which clips on where. So I went online and got the diagram for the CRT. And I Okay, here we go. Right now I've only got about one and a half volts on the filament. And I don't see any, any indication of... Oh, no, I do. I do indeed see an indication of glow. It's way back there. 
increase this a little bit. Glowing stronger and stronger. Looks like on the two range, it actually tops out at two volts. I don't use these bottom ranges that much. I wasn't entirely sure how they work, so I guess I gotta go up to the three range. Now I'm about 2.3 volts. Filament's glowing. You can kind of tell by the filament glow too. It should be nice and bright, so we're still a bit too low. If you really want to be super careful, you can put an ammeter in series, which is what I did on the holiday, because it's supposed to be 600 milliamps. That's a little bit more reliable than I'm checking the voltage. But it seems to be glowing healthy. I set this on about two and a half volts. It should be a little bit higher, but that should be enough juice to give us some indication of emissions. All right, no heater cathode shorts, no grid one shorts. Cut off. No response, but I've seen that before, not the end of the world necessarily. Well, we've certainly got very weak emissions, and they do vary a bit when I turn this knob, but again, I'm on restricted filament juice, and I've only had this on for like 60 seconds. So, definitely encouraging, and it is slowly climbing, so... Filament not blown. We've got some emissions. Uh, that's, that's all a very, very good sign. Because I am a bit paranoid about this, I am going to grab an ammeter and I want to monitor the current that's actually going to these filaments. Okay, I pulled off one of the filament lead clips and hooked up an alligator clip going to one side of my ammeter and the other side of the ammeter is going to the CR70 clip. I've got my meter in AC amperage mode, so we have 0.58 amps. Should be 0 0.6, so I'm going to turn up the filament juice a little bit. Alright, so now we know we have the proper current flowing. Let's go do these tests again. Still really no cutoff control, and emissions are weak. Well, I'll let this run a while and see if that improves. Hopefully it will. It's been about an hour and the emissions are getting up there towards the green. Oh, and I, I misspoke earlier. I think I said this was a 2.68 volt filament, and there are some, like here. 2.68. However, the 21 EAP4 is actually 2.35. So you got to be careful. Even within these low voltage predictive CRTs, there's some variation. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting up there. Life test stinks. I'm pushing the button right now. This needle drops. But even with this, that should produce a, a watchable picture. Might just take a little while to warm up and turn the brightness up a bit, but considering how scarce these are, that's a good sign. So I think we're all right with the picture too. Now I posted online about this and tantalizingly somebody posted that he knows where somebody is selling a complete head unit with cable on Craigslist, but I was searching around and I don't know where it was or but I couldn't find it, so I I shot him a message and uh, I'm waiting for a response, so uh, that would be too good to be true that there could be one of these out there that maybe I could uh, swing a deal and have it shipped to me. Otherwise, boy, that's, that's going to be quite a task to fabricate a cable like this. I removed all the screws from the back so it's ready to come off found a, an old service note on here and it looks like this set spent some time in Philadelphia PA Let's see, there we go. 
go. This will be another huge challenge <laughs> in addition to having to make a new cable and somehow attach it to this CRT end. I've got this crazy socket here. And there's no way I'm going to find something like this other than, like I said, to luck into another entire CRT uh, head assembly. Got the remnants of the antenna here. Maybe something could be made of this. You know, it's got the base, it's got the central part, and it's got the screws here, so it's sort of there. I think there literally was some kind of plate around here, and of course there's the uh, antenna shaft that would have gone in there. There were versions that had UHF, but this does not. That's a local distance switch. Now we can see the tuner back in there. So I had a voltage cage and circuits and so on. This chassis uh, at first blush looks a lot like the chassis in the uh, holiday model. Yeah, looks like some kind of funkiness going on down inside there. Oh, let's see, I got some quarter inch nuts to remove and then uh, I'm going to pull the knobs off and I should be able to pull this chassis out. Okay, that came out fairly easily. Just had to remove those three nuts and remove the two speaker wires. From what I can see, it's all there and in decent condition. Hmm. I don't know if that was original or not. Those are a couple diodes in some kind of, it looks like a fuse holder modified to hold a couple diodes. Uh, originally this had selenium rectifiers I imagine. Oh, there goes the fusible resistor. It hasn't exploded though like in my uh, holiday set but <laughs> it's falling apart. Alright, so the cabinets For service technicians only, preliminary schematic. Huh, maybe this was tucked in there at the factory. That's kind of neat. It's filthy, but I'll make a scan of this right away. Some stains on it. Let's see. And who knows what that is. Ooh, I think what this is, is this is the tube for the antenna that would have gone up in here. Now, if just, it was just the antenna tube itself floating around inside them, would really have something. Well, doesn't look like it. Just some dust and some bits of wax. Probably some capacitors or something were oozing over the years. Oh, speaker looks to be intact up front. Alright, so back to the chassis. If you want to see this chassis in more detail, watch my video on the Predictor Holiday because it looks to me like they are darn near identical. But this one is in better condition. Although this one, huh? The same thing has exploded and disappeared on this one as the other set. And that is the thermal inrush limiter that would have gone in series with the uh, two filaments, I believe. So, no doubt, somebody tried to plug this in, as knuckleheads tend to do, and uh, that exploded. This looks to be intact, though. Oh, be a miracle if it was good, though. This is a uh, multi-tapped power resistor. Just leaves one last thing, which is this high voltage cage and the flyback inside. I 
Had to peel back this bit of tape and then work the lid loose. And here we are. I gotta say, that is the nicest looking fabric I've ever seen in a Predicta. And I don't doubt it's a replacement. I just hope it's a compatible replacement. I imagine it is. I mean, it looks, it fits in there fairly well. It looks like they did a decent job installing it. I think, oh, well, I might have spoke too soon. <laughs> I was wondering what those bits of junk were done at the bottom. It's the outer coating, which is not at all uncommon. It's just all completely falling off. But no big deal. That can be recoded. Replacements for these are quite difficult to find. So I'll definitely be very careful around it. Alright, so I was very, very happy to find this. But it's really not going to alter my plans any. I am still going to stick with restoring the holiday. And it doesn't look like I will need to scavenge any parts from it to get this one running because they both have usable pitcher tubes, it would seem. In the meantime, I will clean this up, admire it, and hunt around online for suggestions on what to do about the severed umbilical cord. Hope you guys enjoyed this look at a Philco Predicta Tandem, aka Penthouse TV.